Hello everyone. Today we are doing something quite different. We're not metal detecting, but we're here in this rather lovely location. And we're going to do some 3D ground scanning with the OKM Fusion. Um, so this lighthouse sits on the coast over a system of caves. Now you can see where the cave entrances go and how far into ground they go. But what we're looking for is are there any extra tunnels? Are there any extra caves? Are there some hidden smugglers tunnels or treasure buried beneath this uh, this lighthouse? So that's what we're doing today. Um, we're out with the OKM Fusion and we're going to do some scans and we're going to see what we can find. Let's see what happens. What's the plan then? Well, we know that there's a cave here and we know that it goes back roughly just underneath to where you see the wall above the cave, around about there. Okay, after that it's filled in. But what we want to look for or see if we can find is, does that cave actually extend further back toward the lighthouse? Uh, are there any other tunnels? Are there some other caves or tunnels that potentially we might be able to pick up with the OKM 3D scanner? So that's the plan. This is the area we're gonna have a look at. We're gonna map it out and then we're gonna scan that area and see what we turn up. Okay, so here we are out with the uh, OKM Fusion Light. Now I'm doing a voiceover on this because it was really windy up there and the audio was terrible. Um, you'll see that I've got the white pegs out. You don't need those pegs. But the reason I've got those out is each pass ideally should be half a metre away from the previous pass. So you want sort of 50 centimetre gaps between your passes. So I just put those down because it makes sure that I make it accurate and it works better. So the Fusion is a magnetometer. Um, the big difference with this one, though, is it's 3D scanning. So you'll see I've got the smartphone in my hand there. Um, and that's just guiding me and showing me um, which pass um, I've done and it's giving me a basic readout and display of what I'm seeing. And then obviously afterwards we can put it onto the laptop and I'll show you what we came up with. Um, so that's what we're doing. Um, the fusion light goes down to around about 25 to 30 feet deep. So this thing's punching deep and this is the entry level OKM. Um, there are other models that they've got. Um, punch even deeper, much deeper than this. So there I am, I've stopped, there's a few interested locals asking what's going on. Um, so they wanted to talk about the kit and all that type of thing. So we have a chat um, and then a little while later I carry on and I broke it down to three areas. Um, I keep it, the search areas small. So the first one was a 20 by 10 meter area. Then I did a 10 by 10 and then I did a five by five working back toward the lighthouse. Cool. So I know you all want to uh, have a look at the results, but I was offered a chance to go and have a little look around the lighthouse, so I thought it'd be rude not to uh, not to have a look around there first. Although these stairs, 130, 140, I can't remember how many told us, but it was a long way up there. Um, and then we had the ladder, the ladder to uh, climb the last little bit up into um, the actual top deck of the lighthouse. But once I was up there... Um, and I was a little bit out of breath. It was absolutely worth it for this view. Just take a look at this view. What a fantastic place to be working slash recording using uh, using the OKM and uh, having a look around. It was absolutely stunning. A bit misty, but what a fantastic place. We're at the top of the lighthouse. That's a lot of stairs. However, the view is absolutely worth it. It's a bit clagged in actually. Um, it's a bit misty, but we're up here. And there's a, just up here, little bird's nest. Well, big bird's nest, but I'm not climbing up there to, uh, to see what's in it. But yeah, let's go have a look inside.
office. Um, we've hooked up the smartphone to the laptop. Now, both of which the smartphone and the laptop are provided with the uh, OKM Fusion Lite. Um, and what we're doing is using the advanced sort of 3D studio uh, visualizer so we can put in some of the parameters from today's scan um, and have a more accurate and more detailed look at it. So what we've got here um, is our information about the field length. So you remember I mentioned earlier the first big scan that we did was 20 meters by 10 meters. Um, beneath it down here we could put in the GPS um, location and coordinates if we wanted to. Um, what we've also got over here is we've got scan overlay so we could um, with that we can put an overlay of like a for example aerial photo or map of the area on there um, but we're not going to do that for this one because we just want to look at the scan so what we're going to do here is we're going to put in the parameters for the ground type now i've got rock in here because it is predominantly bedrock with a small amount of sandy soil on the top um, but you've got lots of different options on here, so clay, concrete, asphalt, gravel, so on and so forth. Um, sand and all the other things, neutral, but we've gone for rock. So what we're going to do is we're going to apply that, and then here you can see our, click the right one, you can see our finished scan. So as we look at it here, this is the sea down at this end, the lighthouse is up at this end. And this is the first pass that we did down by the fence line um, and I'll throw up another picture in a minute to show you where this has come up but it is in fact as you can quite clearly see a tunnel down there um, now this tunnel it's approximately sort of five to six meters wide about two meters under the surface of the ground and the tunnel itself when you have a look at it um, and when we put the, uh, the curse across it is roughly about a meter and a half to two meters high um, so in its shallowest parts, you can see over here, it's down to just, just under a metre under the surface. What you can also see on here, I don't know how well you'll see it through the phone, uh, through the camera rather, is you've got these bits. So this is the darker colour, is the deeper part of the tunnel. So as you come into the tunnel stroke cave, there are in fact sort of obstacles in there. So these are what would in effect be walls you would have to go around as you're walking through. But there is a route that takes it all the way from our start point, which was down by the wall, all the way back to the lighthouse. Now, people uh, we talked to, the historians that work there, did say that the cave that we showed you at the beginning, um, that has over time been filled up with sand and it did actually used to go a bit further back. Interestingly, this tunnel isn't in line with the original cave that we're looking at. It's actually over to the east side of it. So this is a completely separate cave slash tunnel that no one even knew was there. Um, what we are going to do is we're going to go and scan it a bit more and we're going to um, go back and we're going to find where the tunnel starts and hopefully potentially find an entrance. Now it could be that this tunnel doesn't even have an entrance. It's just a sealed off cave stroke tunnel. Or it could be that this tunnel was, um, actually has rather been used in the past. So who knows what could be in there. but. This is the sort of quality from the fusion light. This is the sort of imagery you can get when you're looking for things. Um, now we can do lots of other things. I'm not gonna go into all the tech of this bit of software. We can start doing cross sections and we can look at how deep things are and all the rest of it. Um, but it just gives you a bit of a, a bit of an example of what it is that this can turn up. Um, so yeah, really interesting. It um, seems to be that there's a hidden or unknown tunnel leading from the shoreline all the way up to the old mid 1800s lighthouse so yeah fantastic now if you're interested if you want to learn more about these machines and have a look at them if you go onto the joan allen uh, website and i'll stick a link in the video for it um all the other machines are on there and all the other things that you can uh, all the other options you can go and have a look at but we've got a few more interesting things coming up with this a machine where we're going to go and have a look at some other exciting places one of them is we're going to go and look for some dungeons um that were rumored to have existed under a castle that's no longer there so there's lots going on but there's huge potential for this machine uh, there's lots of different applications for it now it's not a treasure hunting machine you're not going to go out there and look for hammered coins with it but when you're looking for hidden tunnels voids maybe big hordes, that type of thing, treasure chests. Um, you could be looking for gas lines, pipelines, water lines. 
who knows, but in a sort of treasure hunting, archaeological type um, application. You can see on the screen there, the graphics there are fantastic. It's um, quite exciting. I just want to go out and search everywhere now and see what else we can find. So do go and have a look on the Joan Allen website. Um, have a look at these machines if you're interested. Feel free to stick some comments in there. Um, Apologise for the lot of voiceover on this video, but it was so windy. Um, it was easier just to do it this way and explain about the machine. So there have been lots more coming with the OKM. So until the next video, take care.